feel like I'm alone. If a tree falls in the forest, did it fall? I don't know. Somebody heard it, so, you know, had to be, can't be alone. Hello, fellow humans, and welcome to this assembly tutorial in which we will be going over how to use a sky object from one map and import it into another, as well as swapping around shaders with vehicles and weapons and what you can do to change up uh, these items to the way you want them to be. So, let's get started. Open up assembly. And you can see that I have recently opened mission M45, and that is the Long Night of Solace. And then I also have Forge World, both of which can be uh, found at your Halo Reach Maps directory for your game installation. So I'm going to go ahead and first open up M45, and we're going to start this tutorial by extracting a scenery tag. So this scenery tag is, um, let's say I want to use... Uh, sky underscore orbit. I have no idea what this is. I've previously used the uh, sky underscore mission, but I want to use the sky underscore orbit. Well, now that I have found this tag, I can right click and extract. So I will save this as sky 5. And now it's going to extract. It's going to take a couple seconds maybe, and it extracts everything that it needs for this tag to run properly. So now I can close M, uh, mission M45, but I do want to show you something. Uh, which is located in the scenario tag. So you'll notice that in campaign missions there are multiple uh, sky objects used to create uh, the game space. So we have clouds, we have sky orbit, and additionally if you want to see, okay, well this is sky wafer, whatever, uh, you can just click that arrow and it will locate it for you. Um, and that is another method of finding the tag uh, that you want to uh, mess around with. So for us, we've already uh, exported our tag. We now need to import it into Forge World. So I now can import it under Tags, and I can now inject it. So keep in mind, I'm out of the in-game uh, in map while this is occurring. And it will take a minute or two, so I'm just going to fast forward through this part. Never mind, not needed. <laughs> so it has now imported everything for this uh, sky object to function the way it needs to. So we will go back to the scenario tag, in this case on our forge underscore halo map, locate it, scroll down to sky references, and you can see I've already messed around with this mission because normally the uh, base uh, sky is the sky underscore halo. So now we will select sky underscore orbit, which is the one we just uh, exported and have now have imported into forge world, and we will now save this change. So we have now saved that change, and we can see what happens when we go in-game. So I'm going to use my handy-dandy Xbox 360 controller, and obviously the first thing I notice is that, one, this is all blank, but two, I have a whole different sky. So that is how you actually change the sky. But let's say we wanted to change where objects are in the sky, or thereof. So I'm a reset this map and we're going to change the vanilla forge world uh, map itself all right so the map has been reset i'm in forge world but i still have multiple uh, maps map objects tag injected into this map so that means that i can still use them when i want to so we need to locate the sky underscore halo render model so i typed in sky underscore halo and i have now found the render model right here so this, like I said, this we I reverted the map to the base changes, and that uses the sky underscore halo, uh, a sky object, and it only uses one sky object. So now we can change parts of the sky by going down to materials, and you can see that there are multiple um, options for us to change. So let's say we wanted to change the ring into something else. Now keep in mind that these uh, shaders have been specifically designed for a specific location. So when you mess around here, you're not going to get um, perhaps the changes that you want right away. For instance, I selected the Distant Mountains shader, but I'm actually only changing what is inside the ring. So I don't, obviously that is not a good change, so let's revert that. I'm going to do Control R and then control shift P, and that will quickly revert those settings back to normal. We can go in game just to double check, and you can see the ring is as it should be. 
So now let's uh, let's change maybe uh, this entity right here into something from uh, mission M45, and let's use the reach underscore planet. So now you can see that this shader, the uh, third entry, is on for this section of the map has now been changed to the reach planet, which this is you know this is good, but obviously you would have to make changes to the rest of the map, including the ring. Uh, as well to get this uh, as your desired look if you were going for a space look. So let's change uh, this to space and see what happens. Okay, so now this shader has basically made everything gray, and I don't think it was intended to be, uh, obviously it was not intended to be used there, but I don't think that shader is working uh, out at all. So let's change this. So now we have cruisers, Let's make another change. Let's use a thunderstorm. Oh, maybe we could use uh, not that. Let's use a lightning bolt because I want to show you uh, this is pretty cool too. So when you use things that have dynamic, uh, kind of have a dynamic action to them, when you select like a lightning bolt, for example, it's going to um, be actually occurring. It's kind of like a loop that goes on. But you can have uh, actions go on in your map. So let's say we wanted lightning bolts or streaks uh, across the sky. Then we can certainly have that happen. Um, so now let's just be ridiculous. And you'll notice that there are objects for characters. There are objects for uh, vehicles all in here. And you can use all of them uh, as a shader. So this is June's hut. Uh, his his hood that goes around his uh, chest armor, but we could even use uh, shaders for a lifeboat as our uh, on our map. And let's just to show you that this does change location. Uh, I don't want to change that one. Um, we can change shaders for a different uh, location as well. So let's use low orbit terrain for this one and see what happens. So now I should have changed a different shader located somewhere else and there it is so as you can see these are not pretty changes at all uh, you would definitely uh, if you had a objective in mind I'm sure you could reach that objective by messing around and and changing how things are but there's one more change for the sky that we need to talk about so I'm gonna re reset again control R control shift P so that's basically reloading and then uh, poking, reloading from file and then poking all changes. So now let's take a look at changing the sun flare. So if you were uh, looking here at marker groups, you can see that there is a sun flare attached to the render model. So this is a XYZ position. And then you also have uh, some quarter neon coordinates that are not being used except for the W, which if I remember correctly, uh, it being set to one, uh, will basically uh, make sure that it, none of this is used uh, as a, I guess, a, I don't know. I'm not sure, but it's not being used at this time. So we can change the sun flare, which I'll point out to you is this little guy uh, to be really wherever we want it. So I'm going to change this to negative 4,500 and we should see that it ha the sun has moved a little bit over to the right. But let's change this to 4,000. And it looks like it's moved further back. Let's change the Z to 2,000 and see what happens. You can see that it has moved down a little bit. So uh, to end this section of a tutorial, you can change uh, shaders that are located in the sky object itself. You can change the sky object or the sky box. And you can change things like sun flare all to create a new or different sky than what people are used to. And that's very good if you're creating, you know, an atmospheric mission where there's infected and you want to create a very gloomy sky, then you have that available to you already. Uh, you just have to locate 
whatever uh, sky object you want from a particular map or mission, uh, extract it, import it, and you're good to go. You will have to mess around, and you will have to pretty things up by making sure your uh, where things are aligned, they are aligned and mesh properly. Uh, until we can do things like mesh importing, uh, this is the best we can do right now for uh, changing things like the sky and shaders as a whole. So now that I've discussed that, let's now look at changing weapon and vehicle shaders. Alright, so I have opened up the Assault Rifle render model and the Banshee render model, uh, both of which can be located under the mode tag and their uh, respective entries. So. Uh, the shaders are located under materials just like it was when we were messing the uh, messing around with the skybox and you'll see that they both have uh, multiple entries assigned to them that will change uh, different things so let's say for the banshee let's change the side of it which i think is uh, the first entry and we can change it to be uh let's just change it to be something like the glass so we have now changed our banshee into a shader that was designed for the Banshee uh, but is not being used uh, for this particular entry and it has changed the sides uh, and the wings of the Banshee but let's say we wanted to use the Banshee metal shader so now it's definitely uh, more metallic and this shader is functioning, I mean, it's a high quality shader that was designed for this. So, of course, I mean, it's going to look nice, uh, is what I'm saying. We can uh, use the vanilla, and you can see that, I mean, it's what you'd expect. Uh, but uh, what I'm saying is, if you use a sh class of shaders that are designed for something, um, in this case, the Banshee, uh, if you use Banshee shaders with Banshee shaders, then it's going to look better than if you start pulling out uh, random shaders. Now, for example, let's use something for the Ghost, which is a similar vehicle in design, and it looks utterly rubbish. Um, obviously, you would not want to use that for uh, this instance. But you can mess around with this. You will find things like uh, that are transparent or invisible. You will find things that uh, clip out. Uh, if you put, you know mess around with this long enough, it's all a matter of preference. But that is where you uh, make these changes under materials about halfway down under a render model tag, and you can make those changes there. For now, I'm going to leave this as the Banshee metal because I just I like that look. Now, back to the assault rifle or to the assault rifle. Uh, you can see the assault rifle very similar. It has multiple locations that can be changed in terms of their shader. So uh, let's change number one nine, the assault rifle metal, and let's change it to be uh, the concussion rifle first. So you see what we're changing. So we will be changing parts of the display, parts of the stock, and parts of the actual frame. So let's change one nine to be the needle rifle uh, glass or needle rifle underscore metal okay so obviously this change has applied it's definitely not a pretty change obviously it was not fitted for this weapon but let's use something similar like the shotgun and it's uh has you know it is applied it definitely doesn't look great uh but it looks better than the needle rifle did and you can do this all day, but this is basically uh, where you find uh, the shaders, and this is where you actually change the shaders uh, to, to make those changes. So that brings an end to this video. I hope you found it informative, and maybe now you can go in and play with all this stuff and see what you can do. Uh, and I definitely look forward to what you guys do. So thanks again for watching. Have a good one.